Hi everyone, this is Mark McKenna from NightSkyHunter.com I thought I'd make a quick video because I'm heading out on a photo shoot tonight and I decided I would document some of the, the build up to it and hopefully the results later on. This is Thursday the 10th of the April 2014. The thing is I'm really eager for a photo shoot for a long time. The weather has been really bad here, high pressure, stubborn cloud, pea soup. It's been overcast almost every night for the better part of three weeks and I've got no footage shoots done whatsoever so I'm very eager to do something about that and turn the table so to speak and get some action going. Uh, the forecast for a change is looking very favourable for tonight, Thursday. Uh, we have a slow moving cold front, very weak frontal system crossing the country at the minute this afternoon and it's falling apart, the clouds are starting to break up, there's hazy sunshine coming through now and cold air will be introduced from the west later this evening and the forecast is going for a clear night with frost in land and patches of mist and fog. So with that being said I'm hoping that the, the coastal areas will be clear enough with no interference with too much mist or anything like that. So the plan is uh, for a friend of mine, uh, Oma photographer Paul Martin, he's coming up to join me this evening and then together we're going to head to the coast and probably end up doing another all night photo shoot. Our intentions are different from the usual kind of plan. I want to do star trails. This is something I've been training at for a while now and I've been eagerly waiting for a good proper clear night to try some cool foreground. So the North Coast is one of my favourite places and the skies are epic up there. So uh, I'm planning to hit the Giants Causeway Maybe done this castle and we'll see how it goes from there. So the thing is the moon is very bright tonight. It's a very advanced waxing gibbous phase, uh, not quite full but not far off it. So a very intense moonlight. A lot of the stars will be washed from the sky. But the added benefit from that is the moonlight will actually wash over the countryside, the landscape, and illuminate everything for us. So there'll be no need to use unnatural means like torches or anything out there to you know chew up dark objects in our in our images. So the moon will be a blessing in that way, so my plan is to probably spend an hour, hour and a half doing star trails at any one location. Um, I've got actually two cameras with me, two tripods. I'm going to get them set up at different angles, one a 10mm wide angle, the other at 18mm and perhaps even 50mm. And have them both running at the same time to save time and energy, so we'll see how that works out. I'm really excited about this and can't wait to try these star trails and get well, by the way, I should mention star trails, nobody knows what they are. Have you ever seen those pictures of stars? They're not points of light, but the stars are actually curved in graceful sweeps. Those are called star trails and they're caused by the Earth's rotation. If you point a camera at the stars and leave it on long shutter running for quite a few minutes, you'll see the stars actually trail during that exposure. That's because the Earth is actually rotating. And as it rotates during the night, the stars will move across the sky, setting in the west, rising in the east, and Circumpolar polar stars move around the North Pole, the Pole Star Polaris, all night long. So if you know what you're doing and you get, you can, you can compose a good image and leave the shutter open for long enough, you'll be able to pick up that effect. The problem is, in order to get decent star trails, you'll need to leave the shutter open for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, that kind of range, to get a really interesting effect. That's not a good thing to do with digital cameras nowadays. The sensors on them will heat up, you'll get a lot of noise. Uh, just bad for the camera and bad bad etiquette really. So the technique is to do short exposures and stack them together. In this case probably 25-30 second exposures with the aperture stopped down, maybe ISO 400-800 range. Leave it running, say you get away with 30 seconds, leave it running 30 seconds, put it in continuous shooting mode, let it shoot away continuously for an hour, hour and a half. And then when I get home I'm going to download them onto this laptop and then use uh, an online free software program called startrails.de and that program will actually stack the individual images together one on top of the other and they'll end up getting the same result, the star trails. It's a much more efficient way of doing it. Uh, that's, that's it in, in a nutshell but it, it sounds easy but it's not quite as straightforward as that. Uh, we need an absolutely perfect clear sky to make this happen. If clouds get introduced during the exposure it ruins the entire star trail um, we have to keep checking the lenses for mist, fog, dew forming as well. That can be real problems. You have to be vigilant, and also the dangers of the coast itself. Any wind, winds, you know, or sudden waves exploding over the rocks may knock the camera into the sea. So we need to be positioned at a very strategic location with good composition and relatively safe. 
it's not sitting, not sitting anyway. Um, I'll try to document it as we go along. I'm just this is daytime. I'm in my home here in Mahara at the minute. Um, uploading a video to YouTube, a nice sunrise, funny enough, from the County Antrim coast last year, one of the most amazing sunrises I've ever seen, absolutely beautiful, so I'm just working on that at the minute, and out of interest, I get a lot of emails to my website, by the way, uh, emails and messages through social networking sites, but this is the first time ever I've actually got a letter from a, someone inquiring about the sky, this lady doesn't have a computer, but she took the time out to, wrote, to write to me instead, asking about something she'd seen in the sky, and looking at an explanation. I was really blown away with that. A really nice gesture and quite a, quite an honour to get a letter nowadays in this modern society. So I was really pleased with that. So I'm just going to re reply to this letter now and then uh, I'll hope to get her on and what the situation is. Okay, I've just finished writing my letter here and you'll have to excuse my shaking hand. I'm holding this camera by hand. I have no tripod with me. It's in the back seat of the car at the moment. But this is the Met Office rainfall radar. The time is now 1.40 in the afternoon and this is the last update at 1 o'clock. I'll flick between the half 12 and half 1 update. Or sorry, 1 o'clock. And you can see the precipitation is moving from left to right to west to east across the country. That's that weak cold front. And behind it, it looks pretty dry right around here. So I'm hoping that will shift through this evening under just clear air. But we'll take it a notch further and... Let's go into my website here, check on natural links. I'm going to go to SAT24, which is a visual satellite image showing the situation. And as you can see, there's our frontal system crossing over Ireland at the minute, heading towards Britain later. Behind it, especially to the north and northwest, you can see an abundance of showers and clear spells. That's what we're going to be dealing with later. I'm hoping as the sun goes down and the cooler air moves in, those shores will start to degenerate and fall apart even more in the way of clear sky than cloud. It looks okay at the moment. So hopefully this will work out. I'm concerned about this cloud over here coming in for, the, for uh, Friday morning. I hope it stays away long enough for us to get some action tonight. I'm just going to click on Northern Ireland. Yeah, you can see those convective showers behind. There's not much instability over the sea, though, so these shouldn't really develop into anything strong. It looks fairly good at the moment. So, fingers crossed, this lasts until darkness and gives us at least several hours of shooting. The time's just after four o'clock. I've just been in contact with Paul there. He's a uh He'll be up the next couple of hours. The satellite images look good. They're clear skies over the coast moving in. So I'm just preparing here. This is my primary camera. Canon 600D with 10mm ultra wide angle lens. I'll be using this for my the best star trails. I already have it set on night mode. I have uh, two head torches. I have 50mm f1.8 lens. Uh, fast zoom lens and the, the kit lens as well which is actually pretty good this is my backup and also secondary camera my old 450D I'm actually going to be shooting two sets of star trails at the same time different focal lengths and different compositions two tripods ready in the car so this one's going to be shooting and so is this one it could be quite interesting I also have a laptop with me no other reason other than the potential backup if I fill up a memory card, I can always download the images on the laptop and switch it off and start new again, so... Almost ready. The sun is coming out. The sky is getting brighter and all is looking good. Now it's time to get something to eat. for coffee let's do it <laughs> <laughs> Let's 
the sky tonight. Well, the sun's blinding me you know, at the minute, and that's a damn good sign. It's a very good I like sign. It. I like it. We got blue sky. The forecast is verified, isn't it? So actually, the cold front's cleared free and it has cleared as they predicted, yes. so it's looking pretty good. Clear spell is coming in from the northwest. And hopefully, it'll clear enough for star trails. Yeah. I think it will. So we're just stopped at Garvey here having a quick snack and a drink. Time is now nearly 7.30. Sun's not setting we've had for an hour and a half hour or so yet, maybe a bit more than that. Yeah, about quarter past eight I reckon. So we're going to get there, we're going to, our intentions are to watch the sunset, shoot the sunset if it's interesting looking, scout out a location. We'll have a fair idea where we're going anyway. Uh, I think at this point it's decided we're going to hit the Giants Causeway, Paul, isn't it? Absolutely. <coughs> That's the target area. Uh, this has been uh, waiting for a while, you know, planning this out. I haven't got the weather. Tonight is the only chance for various reasons. So we're going to make this happen. We'll take advantage of this clear window for the next frontal system cloud comes in. And hopefully uh, later on when I check in, we'll, I'll have some good information to say. Hopefully the Giants Causeway will be nice and quiet. Clear. And the winds will not be too... Harsh on us. I heard they're coming in from the west, stroke northwest tonight, so it might be yeah, blowing in a bit on us. Should be just the latest breeze, I don't think. Should, should be perfect, so we'll check in later on. Castle. It's a very windy, very cold, but there's a beautiful sunset unfolding at the minute, clear sky, the moon is rising in the east. So I'm just zooming in here all the way to the cliffs around the Giants Causeway, and once it gets dark we're going to be located here, doing our star trails. I'll show you how far away that is, I'll back off. Boxing Gibbous Moon, now, very high up the east. Here, but you can see the Terminator and the main moon of seas. Normally, the moon is not a good thing if you're into the night sky, but if you're in star fields, you're forward.
Okay, we're now at the Giants Causeway. It's nightfall. The sky is absolutely perfect and clear and beautiful. So, Paul's set up down here on the left hand side, doing a star trail. I'm set up here slightly above them on the higher rocks. Two cameras. Here's the LCD screen from one and my others over here, the red dot. So we're shooting away here. Oh, bright iridium flare. Hi up. See it. I'm actually got it at the video camera. Oh yeah. Fading. Very bright. I have got a camera too. There's the moon. Now 5 to 12, we're still the Giants Causeway. We spent a good hour or so doing a star trail on high ground. Now we moved down closer to the classic uh, famous honeycombs type rocks for a second round of star trails. The sky is still clear and beautiful, so we're gonna keep going and see what we get here. It's almost 2 a.m. <clears throat> we've now left the Giants Causeway, had uh, tea, now we've relocated to the famous Dunluce Castle. And I have to say, it looks absolutely incredible tonight. Stunning. The way the moonlight plays on the west side of the stonework and the deep shadows in the towers, it's just beautiful. The sea is illuminated by the moon and the, the rocks. It's wonderful. The stars are out. There's some moonlit, low level convective clouds along the horizon. We've got the tripod set up and we're doing an our star trail here. Take advantage of this clear section to see what we get. Paul's shooting away over there in the dark. You won't be able to see him. On the video, but rest assured he's there. Here's the LCD screen. Quite a lot of images taken at the causeway, so... Dunluce will probably see the end of our night. At the minute there's streaky cloud moving in and patches from the northwest. There's a huge frontal system way out there. So we're kind of competing with it to get everything done before it moves in. So far we're winning. 